we're done watching the videos, everyone should have a better understanding of how printing works. Uh, these specific examples were for offset lithography, but the idea or the concept uh, of the half tones and how the color is applied is the same for all printing processes, even though these were specifically offset lithography examples. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact me during uh, class or open class time, open office hours or online chat hours. Um, if you are interested in printing and how it works, you can take Art 1135 Printing Fundamentals or Art 1240 Screen Printing and you'll learn more about the printing processes. But since this lecture is about press impressions, let's move forward and let's talk about that. There are many different types of offset lithography printing presses. In general, there's a lot of different types of printing presses, but since we're talking about offset lithography, all of the examples that I included below are all offset presses. And what matters to you is not what it looks like, how big it is. Um, you want to count the towers, and the towers will tell you how many colors it prints. So on the big example here on the right-hand side, if I count the towers, one, two, three, four, five, six, this is a six-color printing press. This one is an eight-color printing press. And all I have to do is count the towers to know how many colors it's capable of printing. Inside each tower, so inside this column right here, you would see something that looks like this. Um, we have a plate cylinder, a blanket cylinder, and an impression cylinder, and there's ink that's applied. And what's important for this class is to know that only one color of ink can be applied per tower. Now, now I did say that every time a sheet of paper goes through a tower, an impression occurs. So if this is a four color process printing press, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, you would say, okay, well, there's an impression on the first tower, there's an impression on the second tower, there's an impression on the third tower, and there's an impression on the fourth tower. However, uh, when we calculate impressions for costing for the press, we're only concerned of did the sheet pass through the press. So even though a sheet of paper would go through this press and it would have four colors applied to it, it only goes through the press once, so it's one press impression. If we print on the back of the sheet, if the sheet comes off the end of the press, we flip it over, we put it back in, then it would be two impressions. So your only options for press impressions are either it has one pass on press or it has two passes on press. So to reiterate that, in theory, the diagram below would be considered to have four press impressions because each tower will add an additional color to the sheet of paper. But in printing, we're only concerned of with how many times a sheet of paper goes through the press. So this looks like one big sheet of paper, but it would be a small sheet of paper that passes through the black tower through the yellow tower, through the magenta tower, and then through the cyan tower. If we were then to take it off the press, flip it over, and put it back through to print the back of the sheet, it would have two press impressions for every one sheet of paper. This slide just reiterates again what I said. The image to the right is of a, is of a four color printing press. Each time one sheet of paper passes through the press, four colors will be applied to it, but it is only considered one press impression. If the sheet of paper has to go through two times, it's two impressions. If 10,000 sheets go through the, the press one time, there's 10,000 impressions. If those sheets are going to be flipped over and the backs are going to be printed, it's 20,000 impressions. 10,000 impressions for the front and 10,000 for the back. 